Okay, well, Wayne back at you with a new Wayne Talks. Uh, I said I was going to be doing this series on Thai relationships and sin sought and, you know, everything about marrying a Thai and how to find a good Thai girl and, you know, everything. Um, I've tried making this video now four times, and four times it has kicked me off halfway through the video after ten minutes or so of, of uh, <laughs> this, so I'm kind of losing my patience here now. Um, okay, so... I'm going to dive right into Sinsot in the Thai dowry system to make the first video here in this series um, because this is something that I get asked a lot. Um, no, there is no set price. First off, now I get asked that all the time. Uh, what's a fair price? Well, there's a lot of factors you have to evaluate. Uh, first thing I tell you before you're going to enter into any kind of Sinsot negotiation or you know, marriage with a Thai woman, if you're a Westerner, especially, you know, American, European, whatever, uh, Australian, I highly recommend that you do minimally 40 hours worth of reading on Thai culture, uh, Thai tradition, uh, sin sought, um, I, I, and from every angle, uh, not just trust one source, you know, read the contradictions. Um, and really get a good understanding of what you're getting into. Um, if you assume that um, relationship understandings are universal, you'll find out very quickly into your disappointment that they're not. The expectations of a Western relationship versus the expectations of a Thai relationship can be very different and can have dramatic effects on you. Um, open communication with your wife, if she does not speak a lick of English and you only speak English, and you guys communicate physically, well, yeah, that's not really going to work. You guys need to be able to talk and have an understanding of the expectations of each other and each other's families as well. Uh, that's a big thing because Thai families are very tight-knit for the most part, and uh, most traditional Thai families especially, and you're not going to uh, just write this off as if we got married and went on our own way. They are going to be involved in your life for the rest of your life and your kids and your wives and could even be financially in your life for a long time. So these things need to be read over very, very well and you have a very good understanding of culture, traditions, um, and just the mindset of, of a tie in a relationship and what's expected of a husband and the wife and, and things like that because uh, it is not universal. Um, and I find that with most cultures can have clashes like this. But uh, with Thai and Western, it's, it's, there's a lot of things you're going to have to learn. Um, so I recommend not just watching my videos, but, you know, like I said, at least 40 hours of research. Uh, and if you can, a couple hundred. Um, I have over a couple hundred hours of my research before I married my wife so I could fully understand what I was getting into. And I'm glad I did. And it has made for a smooth transition with me and my wife and us both understanding what's expected of each other. And our personal expectations, too, which is a, a lot of communication between you and your wife as well, or future wife-to-be, and uh, maybe even her family. Um, so what I'll start off with is Sinsot. Well, there's no set price. This is what I get asked all the time. Well, this girl, you know, I met her, you know, the family's asking for, like, you know, 150,000 baht. Is that worth it? Uh, is she worth it? Um, I ask them for a million, five million, twenty million baht. Is she worth it? Is that right? Um, they told me it's not negotiable or it's negotiable. But okay. There's no law that requires sensat for a dowry in Thailand. There's there's no laws. There's no stipulations. No guidelines. Nothing. It is completely a voluntary system. Completely a willing system. If you don't pay a sensat, you're not going to prison. You know, if you do, you know, it's up to you how much you want to pay. If you can't come to the agreement, then, you know, maybe she's not worth it to you for that, then that's, you know, what you got to, you know, come to the realization yourself. All right. A lot of Westerners will view this as a uh, almost prostitution. Uh, you know, they're selling me their daughter, you know, um, like a slave kind of thing. All right. Get that out of your head right away because that is not how Thais view this. And that is not how the culture ever viewed it. Um, now, are there some bar girls out there trying to get a sin sought to make their family wealthier? Yeah, and she's probably, you know, married and divorced five guys already, and she's, she's trying to get another sin sought. 
has you know three kids, a drinking and smoking habit, and you know, maybe even a drug habit, and you know, yeah. So you know, if if you if your gut feeling tells you that this isn't quite right, trust it. You know, it, your feelings really matter, and if you can't handle this system, then maybe you shouldn't be marrying a tie, or at least a tie that comes with a dowry. Um, not all do. There are progressive ties and some that just don't accept a dowry and don't believe it's needed. Uh, then a lot of traditionals do. Okay, so let me explain kind of what the dowry is looked at by ties and in Thai culture. And again, these are all my understandings and my research and what I've found. Um, these are my opinions. Um, if you think I'm wrong or you have your own opinion or you think something's different or whatever, you know, I, I, please go make your own video and um, explain your view to people because they can be helpful and I recommend that all the viewers look at those views. Contradicting views are very good at learning a happy medium, finding that middle place. One would be this extreme, another this extreme, and you know you find that middle ground by looking at contradicting opinions. Uh, at least that's what I did and that's how I came up with my assumptions. Um, okay, so um, how can I go into this? Uh, Sinsat in Thai belief and view shows a few things. It's, it's a good system in a way. Um, what it does is it shows the family and the wife your determination to marry her. Um, if you're willing to pay the family to marry your wife, then you're probably not just looking for a, a one night stand. Um, obviously, you think you found something worth, worth it. Another thing is, can you afford your wife? Um, now, it's kind of true in a way that the higher status and financially secure the family and the wife is, the higher financially you're going to have to pay. I mean, if she comes from an Eson family in the Northeast, a poor farming family that don't really have two sticks to rub together, and she doesn't even have an eighth grade education, well, you know, they're not going to be, if, well, they could ask you for a million baht about 30,000 American dollars and if that's the case you know, eh, then that's up to you but I wouldn't you know, I'd walk away from that one um, but again that's you know up to you um, in from what I found of the happy mediums that is extremely excessive but it seems to be the magic number among poor families for the first ask 30 million baht seems to be the uh, the key <laughs> and you know, sometimes I almost would consider that a little disrespectful in the circumstance that I told you. That's, that's kind of a lot to ask for, and they know they really shouldn't be asking for that much. But again, you know, it's what it is. Now, if your wife comes from a family of you know doctors and she's a actress in Thailand or something, and you know her family you know makes a couple million dollars a year or something, you know they're in the top one percent or something like that. Don't expect to pay five thousand dollars to marry your wife. Um, they're going to expect you to pay a hell of a lot more. Um, and again, when it gets up to those, and it can be ridiculous amounts of money, uh, gold, jewels, you know, all this stuff's included in this in a dowry or sinsa. And everything's negotiable, but expect it to be a much higher, um, higher sinsa for that you know level. Um, Okay, so now let me explain. You got the uh, the family kind of views it also again to make sure that you can afford her. If she's used to driving Mercedes, then she's not going to want to go drive a Pinto. You know, from 1985. <laughs> you know, she's going to want to drive you know a nice Mercedes and keep the lifestyle that she's used to. Therefore, if you can't afford to pay the dowry, you know, it, again it's negotiable. But if you try to bring it down too low, then they're probably going to refuse it because they figure you can't afford her. And then they'll just end up taking care of her anyway. Um, and maybe you. Um, also, ties refer to the sin sought as the mother's milk. Um, you're kind of paying the parents back a little bit. And it, again, it's not really for profit for them, but it's kind of like did they put her through school? She got a good education. You know, how far did she go? Did she get a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD? Is she, uh, did she go to good schools? Did they raise her well? Is she very respectful? Is she, you know, what her looks like? You know, did they get her braces, keep her teeth nice, you know, do all this stuff? You know, all this can matter to a sin sought. It's some of the ways that it's negotiated and things. Uh, are the parents still married? Are the grandparents still married? 
you know, do they show monogamy in their relationships? Is, uh, you know, how are the parents financially, do, you know, they have their own business, are they scraping by one bot at a time, you know? Um, you know, these are all things that matter um, when negotiating a sin sought. Um, you know, her status, um, has she ever been married in a relationship? Is, you know, has she have, does she have a kid already? Um, these are big factors in a sin sought and even if a girl can even get one. Uh, a lot of time men, if she's been married before, will never pay us a, a dowry for her on a second marriage. Um, because it kind of shows a track record of broken marriage, no matter whose fault it was. Um, the way they look at it, it should have been worked out. Um, kids, you know, that's a burden to the husband that now he has to take care of her kids. Um, so that can be another thing that would decide it and also would kind of show that maybe she's not that respectful, especially if she wasn't married when she had those kids. Um, therefore, because that would be a big embarrassment to her family if she got pregnant out of wedlock and uh, had a child to, uh, to another guy and they never married. That would be a big insult. Now, if she was a widow, you know, maybe she got married at 24, 25, and uh, they were together a couple of years, and he was in the military or something, and he got killed or something like that in a fight, you know, in, in action or something, then that's a little different than, yeah, there very well might be a dowry expected or something like that. Um, you know, it all matters. It still shows that she's a good person and that she's, you know, lived up to her obligations of being a, a responsible uh, and good person. Um, now a bar girl, she's might be working for her family going out and trying to get sin sots, you know, a lot of dowries and could be working on her fifth husband just so she can get another dowry. Um, a lot of times they might even get the dowry and never even marry. You know, um, it does happen. I've heard of it out there. Uh, trust your instincts, trust your gut. If it doesn't feel right and if you can't trust the person, you shouldn't be with them. Uh, and that's what it boils down to. Um, so let me give you an idea of my kind of research because I know everybody pressures me for numbers here. And again, I said this is all negotiable. Remember, there is no requirement for sinsot. There is no dowry law in Thailand. You know, you're not expected to. Anything you do is totally voluntary and it's up to you. Um, if you, you know, it, it's, it's totally a voluntary thing. Uh, nobody requires it. Um, and some families don't even, uh, some of the more progressive families now don't even expect one. Uh, but, um, so this is what you're going to do. Uh, let's say, I'll give you kind of a spectrum scale. She's an Isan girl from Isan. Uh, her family are farmers. They don't really have much, you know, two pot, a pot to piss in or anything, you know, um, rubbing two sticks. Uh, she doesn't have an education, even high school. Um, you know, there's not much outlook for her. You are totally beneficial to her and not so beneficial to you. Um, now, Thai dowries can, can, can be a good thing for the man, too, especially if you're Thai. If you're a Westerner, maybe not so much, but if you're a Thai, um, if the family owns a business, maybe they own a farm, maybe they own a packing plant or something. Um, you could be, a lot of times you're incorporated into that business. Um, if she's an only daughter, these things matter too. How many daughter, how many kids are there, siblings? Uh, if she's an only daughter, usually the line of inheritance goes from the family to the daughter in Thailand. Uh, there's no guarantee to that, but that's usually how it works. The inheritance of, of a house or business or anything would, would go monies in that direction, which then would be the husband's as well. So, you know, that can be part of a negotiation and sin sought and understanding how things go. Um, a lot of times a Thai man will marry a, a Thai woman and he automatically, you know, gets into the family business. So he, maybe he was making, you know, 50000 baht a month or 30000 baht a month, about $1,000 a month at his other job. And now, you know, he can go work for the family and make 90000 baht a month, 3000 baht a month. Um, three thousand dollars I mean a month so you know that would be a st nice substantial increase for him and his quality of living and you know eventually he would take over the business is kind of the way it looks supposed to work 
later on. Um, so yeah, this is this is how it uh, or have a share in the business. So this is kind of how it works. Now for a Westerner, a lot of times we're not going to go work for the family. We're not you know moving to Thailand. A lot of times we're bringing our wife back to America or England or Australia or wherever. So know that you know this is is how it works. Um, so there's not necessarily going to be a lot of benefit for a Western man when he marries her. Therefore, you know they're going to always ask more from a Westerner than they would from a Thai, because they know most Thais can't afford the the really high dowries. But um, you know just expect it to be an increase as there is in anywhere you travel. Um, so again, if it's a Nissan girl, no education, family doesn't have two sticks to rub together, thing like that. Um, Maybe she's pretty, you know, a thousand dollars, thirty thousand baht might be the dowry. I mean, and she's never been married, has no kids, of course. Um, now, a lot of Thai girls are going to tell you they're virgins, and most of them aren't. Uh, they've probably got it on at some point, but some are, you know, so don't, you know, there are some that would be into their, if they were in school through high school and into their bachelor's degree and they were in school the whole time, maybe they didn't sleep with anybody and they are a virgin. Uh, now, me personally, I'm not a big fan of virgins, but um, you know, uh, I like experience. I'm American, so you know, we're a lot more sexually active at a younger age. But um, I'm not saying a virgin can't be exciting in bed, and they actually can be. Um, it, it, you just have to get the right person if you mesh well. I know sex seems to be a big issue for most Westerners. Um, uh, um, and I don't think you're going to have a lot of problems in that department with a Thai woman. They're very passionate. Uh, people and um, they, if you get one that really loves you and you are committed, it's not a bar girl, uh, just after your money, of course. Um, if you got a real traditional good Thai girl and she loves you, then she'll be 100% with you. Um, where you have probably never seen a connection quite that bond that tight with a a Western girl. To tell you the truth, they have too much going on up here. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying that, but it's true. You know, a lot of Westerners have too much going on up here to relax, and, and we have too many walls and too much discomfort for whatever reasons. Um, where it seems like you don't see that as much with uh, ties. Um, they tend to be uh, more compassionate, more uh, sensitive, and closer knit, very tight. Uh, they bond very close. So. If your wife loves you, of course, and you love her and everything, and you're, you guys are together for the right reasons, then I don't see that being a problem. I think you'll be very happy with your wife, and um, sexually and emotionally, uh, they can be wonderful wives. Um, so, now, again, don't go marrying a Thai because you want a slave wife. I get this a lot. Oh, why do you go to Thailand? You got a good slave, huh? No, a Thai woman will stand up to you and tell you what's up. Um, Maybe she just, it's funny, a lot of traditional Thai girls expect to, you know, do some housework stuff, but at the same time, you know, it's a 50-50 relationship, and a lot of times, Westerners, we go to the extremes, you know, one's going 90, one's coming back 10, stuff like that. Um, you really have to have a 50-50 relationship. Now, yes, if she's a housewife and you're out working, yeah, she should be cooking and cleaning and taking care of the house while you're working, uh, unless you're extremely wealthy and then you both do whatever, but... Um, but yeah, you should both come together and be partners. Um, maybe you're both working, so you both take care of cleaning the house and doing things. Or maybe she works and you're a stay-at-home dad. And you know, all these things are possible. But just make sure that you're coming together and you're doing it together. Um, don't let it be one-sided where she does everything for you and you don't do for her. Um, remember, most again, I'm going to get torn apart by women, American women, but uh, or Western women, but. Um, I find in my experience that almost all my relationships I was going 90 or above and they were coming 10 or less and you know I don't even realize how bad it was until I started going overseas and dating uh, in a different culture um, and uh, from what I've noticed that a lot of Thai women are doing the same thing they are going 90 and their partner doesn't come back very much um, so when you when a, a Western man and a Thai woman get together, a lot of times you will find that you don't have to perform like that. 
um, you catch yourself overshooting each other and having to correct each other, you know, hold on, I can do this, and meeting in the middle. Um, you don't want it to pull to one side or the other because then one's not happy, one's doing all the work and the other one isn't. You, know, you need to be, a relationship is a lot of work and you need to have good communication and a healthy respect for each other and just care about the other person and want them to be happy. Um, and again, this can go to Buddhist principles. I don't know what your religion is. You know, that's another big s serious thing that you need to consider. Is that 95% of ties are Buddhist. So if you're a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew or or something, you really should look into the religion and get to understand it, and don't try to force them into converting to something they're not comfortable with. I was lucky. I just happened to have converted to Buddhism way before I met my wife, and and uh, it was a good fit for me and I met my wife and it was just it worked out very well did I convert to Buddhism for because I planned on marrying a Buddhist no I converted to Buddhism because it was something that worked for me um, and I still don't consider myself any particular Buddhist I'm still a free thinker and a spiritual person so you know I, I have a free mind and I don't fall into the trappings of most religions um, as I see them for what they are. Um, okay, so the, the dowry now. You take a girl who's, let's say, a Bangkok girl. See, where they're from also matters, but a, a Bangkok girl. She went through school. She got a bachelor's degree at a decent college or university. Uh, her family funded her through. She, uh, she was raised well. Let's say she's a good cook. She knows how to sew. Um, she would be a good mother, good with kids. Uh, she's beautiful. You know, a lot of these things can come together. Her family has, you know, medium, you know, middle class. You know, they have a little money. They're, they're, uh, you know, maybe own a small business, a little restaurant or something, or they, or they, uh, maybe they work for people. You know, but they're still doing, you know, good. Her parents are still married. Uh, stuff like that. She has, let's say, one brother. Um, so there's no other daughter, so you know most likely the inheritance would pass to her of any land or anything that they own their house, whatever. All right, so here's the idea. So you look at all that and you weigh it. Now most of those girls would go anywhere from three to ten thousand um, dollars. The more higher level education, the better college, the more beautiful she is, things like that, the higher it goes. Again, they're probably going to ask you for thirty million or uh, one million baht, thirty thousand dollars. And again, you can negotiate, and uh, you know you can say, well, listen, you know, I plan on moving to America, so I'm not going to benefit from the family. I'm not going to benefit from this or that, you know, whatever, you know, however it works out. Uh, you don't want to belittle your wife. That's one thing, and that's a bargaining chip they have on their side too. You don't want to belittle your wife or make her too cheap. Uh, but if it if it is a family that requires the the dowry system and the Again, she's going to be a good traditional Thai daughter, and she's going to respect her family's wishes, uh, even if it's not what she wants. But you know, that's a, that's a good thing. You get to realize that. You may look at it as, oh, our family. Control. Well, it's kind of the way it's supposed to be. Until she's married, her family has a lot of say so in her life. Um, little quirky things that you might want to realize is, you know, how do they plan on raising the children? Um, these are things you should really research and discuss with your future partner before you get married, before you enter into sin sod or anything, and understand where they're coming from and their beliefs and feelings and wants. Um, you might find out that they're used to raising the baby in bed with you and you're going to be sleeping in bed with the child every night for the next 18 years. And, uh, you know, that can be a surprise to Westerners. We're used to putting the kids in the other room when they're, you know, at least four, five, and they have their own bed or something like that, have their own room. So, you know, some a lot of Thais don't believe in that, a lot of Asians, period. And you, you will find that they believe the children should be in bed with them until they're old enough, you know. You will find that. I know some Asians myself that are like that, that, lived, that slept with their parents until they were 20, 21, you know. So it's, um, you know, just, just know that these are things that you assume are universal, but they're not. Um, so, you know, again, a dowry system for a very wealthy girl 
upper class tie in the top one percent or so you know it could be a million dollars or more um, they also can a lot of times since thought would include gold there's a certain amount of gold uh, one bot three bot whatever gold which is not bought in coin it's actually a, a larger amount of gold a couple ounces uh, a lot of times it's like an ounce of gold or something like that um, and one way of doing it is not just giving them little gold bars or ingots it's a uh, a good way of doing the gold too which a lot of times goes to the wife is a gold ring a gold necklace a gold bracelet things like that you want to give them some of that gold gold earrings and the traditional way of thinking of it was that if you know you went away to work or something or something happened and you went away she could support herself and her child ugh, and get transportation to wherever they needed to feed themselves for a while off of that gold. They could sell it and use it to survive if you never came back, you know, if you got killed while working in Myanmar or something. You know, this is going back to the old school Thai traditions. Now, since that doesn't necessarily mean you have to give gold, sometimes it's just the money alone and the family will go and purchase the gold or, or do whatever. Um, there could be other gifts involved. Um, it could be, you know, it doesn't always have to be money. It could be maybe you have a car or something and you trade that or, you know, however it works out. And a lot of times, uh, now, don't get me wrong, not always, but sometimes, you know, just in the wedding gifts alone, when you go to the wedding, the money that everybody gives, sometimes we'll repay your sinsot or a good chunk of it. Uh, sometimes that can be part of sinsot. You can say, you know, the, well, the wedding gift money the parents can keep. Uh, I'll pay you this much and you can keep the wedding gift money and blah blah blah. Also understand that you may be on the hook to take care of the parents. Uh, a lot of times this falls to the youngest girl for custodial care um, and the older ones are financially hooked um, for the family to uh, take care of the parents. Uh, remember there's no social security retirement things like that in Thailand. Uh, it's not really any old folks' homes. The ones that are state-run and very not where you want to be. As Thais usually take care of their elderly. If you plan on moving her to the states and not her family, well, then you're going to have to financially support them. And usually the youngest daughter lives with them or has them live with her. So if you married the youngest daughter or only daughter, most likely that's going to fall to you and your responsibility. Um, as well as your own family in America, however you plan on dealing with that. Um, but no, the mother and father, you will have to you know, provide some care or something at, to those effect. Um, unless there's other arrangements made. But, you know, again, this is all negotiated and understood. Just know, do your research on Thai culture because your wife very well may feel that she wants to take care of her family. And that's a good thing, you know. And she wants to take care of them in their old age. And they could come to live with you. So you might have the in-laws in the next bedroom. Uh, you might want to plan on buying a house with a, a back house <laughs> if you don't want your in-laws living in your house with you. Um, again, you know, if you live in Thailand, you know, Thais communally live a lot, uh, especially at the you know the lower income ones, not you know millionaires, but you know uh, a lot of them live communally. You know, it'll be uncles, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers cousins, you know, nephews, nieces can all be living in one house. And uh, Thais are pretty decent on uh, understanding to, you know, boundaries and uh, a lot better than Westerners are at living communally. Uh, we are not that good at living communally. Um, at least not many that I've ever seen compared to Thais. They very much know how to, to have boundaries and, and uh, respect and you know, know how to do it. Um, and it, it can be a really good experience if you have all that extra help there and people doing things and you know it can, it can be a, a very happy household um, so yeah you know this is all part of the sin sought um, I could probably get more into this later with more I don't think a 30 minute video I'm pretty much you know boring you guys at this point but um just know that you know it's all negotiable nothing's in stone a lot of things about her are going to matter. And again, if you get a girl who's already been married, uh, she had a kid, they divorced, whatever. Mm, see, 
some will ask for a sin sought, but really it's kind of viewed as she should. Um, she's already received her, she was married, the relationship didn't work, so that's a bad sign to the next guy. You know. And again, Americans, we go into this thing, you know, to us, it's like, you know, pay you to marry, you know, marriage isn't permanent. We're so used to divorce in our country, but if you get a good traditional girl, she's not going to try to divorce. Uh, she wants to work it out. She wants to make it work. Um, and again, you got to be willing to make it work, too. Don't be so stubborn and hard-headed. Um, if you've got a good traditional Thai woman, she's going to work very hard at the relationship to keep it happy and healthy and good. Uh, Thai women are also masters at stroking the male ego. <laughs> they know how to how to do... There's these subtleties that they have. They're very good at, at calming you and, and managing you, right? And I know that sounds a little crazy, but it's it's true. They They have a good way of you can almost say leading from the rear. You know, a good man, uh, a successful man too, always needs a good wife behind him, a successful wife, a strong-minded, strong-willed woman who's who's smart. And you will find that in Thai women very much. And they're are good at, you know, helping you make the right decisions. And you two should be making decisions together on your life and, and everything. And you should always leave your ear open to her and um, hear what she has to say. Um, some Thai women can be very insightful and very wise. Um, again, you know, it matters who you marry. If you met her in a bar, she drinks, she smokes, um, she's got tattoos all over, you probably aren't getting a good traditional Thai girl. Good traditional Thai girls don't smoke, they don't go to bars, they don't drink, they don't do any of that stuff. Um, now, you can also get some progressive free thinkers that no sin sought required. You know, maybe they're Christian too, you know, things like that there are. And they'll be a little bit looser and more, but the moral compass of a Thai girl for a traditional Thai upbringing, she does not do these things. She does not go into to bars and drink. She does not smoke. She does not curse. She does not, you know, she's, she's a mother. She's a, a wife. She's uh, respectable in her community. Um, she's usually educated and, you know, has a very good personality, is very sociable, and, you know, all these things matter in Thai culture. And again, all these things matter to the dowry and what you should pay. Now, I'm going to tell you, for most, you know, average, you know, good-looking, but, you know, most, that's what I consider most Asians all attractive, so, you know, um, but a good-looking wife from Bangkok, let's say, never married, did a bachelor's degree, you know, expect to pay at least $5,000 American. 150000 baht. Now, a lot of times you're going to end up paying probably three, 300000 baht, about 10000 American dollars um, for a girl like that, you know, if she comes from a good family and stuff like that. Um, my wife was 15000 but, you know, that's uh, my wife. You can't have her. Um... I got really lucky, and again, I, I, I did pick right. I got a good woman. Um, she's a traditional Thai, comes from a good family. She's smart, she's beautiful, and she knows how to handle me <laughs> better than any woman I've ever been with and knows how to um, not hurt my ego because a man's ego is very important um, and at the same time knows how to keep it under control, not let it get too big but at the same time keep me happy and uh, I'm pretty sure I know how to keep her happy so it's a good mix it, it was a, it's a really good relationship and I'm very happy to have it um, and I hope all of you can find the same now uh, maybe I'll do a video later about uh, marriage to a Thai man for my female viewers where uh, an uh, American woman or European woman would want to marry a Thai man that's a whole different uh, ball game. Uh, totally different expectations and requirements. So, uh, but some women actually very much enjoy Thai men, and uh, they have kind of a macho ness to them, a strong, silent type kind of thing. And uh, you know, so you know, to each. But um, so I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk more about this if you guys have some serious questions. Um, I've heard most already, but you could post some more down here, and I'll uh, 
I'll look at them and if I think there's enough there that I need to make another video explaining more into the SINSOT, then I will. Um, there's a lot of other things to it, but um, uh, next video I'll either do one about the, you know, I'm going to do a video about marriage and, and how it's expected you to get married in Thailand. Um, there's the traditional ceremonies and the white dress and the actual legal marriage and all that stuff and translations that need to be done and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then there's also, um, I'm going to have to do one about traditional girls and, and bar girls and things like that and kind of explain some of that to you. And I'll do more videos on, you know, just basic stuff like that when it comes to relationships and and uh, maybe even a video on the oddities and things, some of the things that are going to catch you a little bit by surprise when you go into uh, marrying a Thai. Um, there are some things that are not standard. Like I said, they're not standard cultural things and you are going to get a awakening and a couple things that you do not expect. You're, whoa, hey, I didn't know that was going to happen, you know, or that was expected or this or that. So. You know, it will happen, but the, the whole point is to do as much research as you can so that you're very educated on the subject. Uh, knowing even the Asian face, uh, face is a principle of how to say things and do things in a way that do not disrespect or uh, belittle anybody uh, and allow them to save face. I'm sure you've heard the saving face kind of thing. Um, you should do some real reading on that too. Even though it's not as prevalent in Thailand as it would be in like Japan or something like that, um, it is there. The, the face principle is pretty much honored in most of Asia and you see you know, how they live even though they may not call it like that, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, yeah, and learn your wife's culture. Really, if you plan on marrying somebody from a different culture, study that culture immensely. I mean, just deeply dive into it and immerse yourself in it and learn all about it. Read everything you can, um, from their religion to the to even the business models and how. One thing you'll find out, and a lot of people don't realize, but you go to Thailand, like how you deal with your employees if you own a business. I mean. You don't just go to your employee and you know harangue them for something they did wrong. I mean, a lot of times you have to go to their coworker and their coworker goes them. And it's different in different cultures in Asia. You know, China is different from Japan, and Japan's different from Thailand and Cambodia. But there's there's a lot of principles on how you interact with you know even your workers. You better learn this stuff, especially if you plan on living there and and um, starting a business or having a family there. These are all principles you need to learn and they're not as simple as you thought they were. Uh, even the fact of negotiating a job or how pay works, I mean a lot of ties, they'll go to five or six interviews to get a job. It can take be a two month process to get a job. And then when you finally win the job and you get it, you know, you might get paid once a month. A lot of people aren't used to living in America, you know, at least once a month paychecks. We're used to weekly or bi-weekly paychecks unless you're an owner and then you're quarterly or bi-yearly or yearly on the draw as well as your own pay. But, uh, you know, things are very, very different in Thailand and, um, you know, the, the structure of just things like that. So definitely read up on the culture, read up on the, you know, there's a lot of websites you can go to, like the CIA's fact book is actually really nice. It kind of gives you a general overall look at things. Um, and then there's just, you know, all different cultural things. At one time I'll put together a, uh, a video that, you know, set specific websites that should be viewed for this and um, I'll try to do something like that at some point. But uh, now we're up to almost 40 minutes, uh, 38 minutes, 47 seconds, 48, 49, yeah, we're getting, getting up there. It's almost a 40 minute video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it again. Subscribe, leave some comments, and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, if you want me to go in a specific direction or explain more of something, then leave me leave me some comments. And if I see enough of it that, that's a subject that needs to be um, del dived into, then I will, and I'll make a video specifically for that. And uh, so that's it. And at least this time, I made it all the way through the video without it stopping. <laughs> so uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. So wadi cup and uh, chuck me.